What the heck was that? That was called mewing and it's a new internet fad, but it's actually really important and today we're going to talk about it. Hi, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we're going to be talking about mewing, but more importantly, mouth breathing or nasal breathing and why it's important. Now, of course, this is important in terms of CPAP therapy because nasal breathing, mouth breathing, nasal mask, full face mask is like half of the battle. But I really want to talk about more about the importance of nasal breathing first and then we can talk about why you might want to choose to try a nasal mask instead of a full face mask when doing CPAP therapy. Now, nasal breathing is actually something that should be a human norm, okay? But in today's day and age, it's really not. You see, ancient people had a lot of things going for them when it came to breathing, okay, or nasal breathing. Because of their food was a lot tougher, um, because they were spent more time outdoors, exercising, hunting, right? A lot of these things develop proper jaw posture. Even things like infant feeding or breastfeeding helps with jaw posture. And so ancient people, for, for, for them, it was normal to breathe out of their nose. And it's kind of like a positive feedback loop as, as you're breathing out of your nose, it makes it easier to breathe out of your nose and, and, and it kind of goes round and round and round. So for them, it was quite normal. Now you might be asking, Tristan, what the heck are you talking about? Why are we even talking about whether or not ancient people breathe out of their nose or their mouth? What does it matter? Well, it does matter. Breathing out of your mouth has a whole list of side effects, okay? Things like facial deformities, maybe not deformity, but jaws not developing correctly, um, bad breath, dry mouth, poor exercise performance or athletic performance. Um, what else? Well, I, I have a list here. Uh, oxygen deficiencies, sleeping issues, snoring, weak uh, posture and neck pain. And so how can all of these things trace their roots back to uh, mouth breathing? So first things first, dry mouth. Of course, having your mouth open is gonna create a drier mouth because your the dry air is touching your tongue, cheeks, all that stuff. Same thing when you're talking like I am now for an extended period of time, you're gonna have dry mouth. Now, why that's a problem is because if you have dry mouth all the time, you're gonna inflame your tonsils, you're gonna inflame your throat, and those things are gonna be more inflamed. It's gonna be harder for you to breathe, even out of your nose, because it's inflaming your whole throat, and then you're gonna have things like sore throat more often. Uh, you're gonna wake up with dry mouth um, and stuff like that. Uh, next thing is going to be things like snoring or sleep issues really important when we're talking about sleep apnea. A lot of people have sleep apnea because they've had years of development with their mouth being open and breathing out of their mouth. Now that's not always the case. Some people are born with a mouth and jaw that even if they had correct breathing posture, they would still have sleep apnea. Some people have an oversized tongue or just larger tongue. Some people who are just older have their airway close up because of the muscles are aging. Um, some people who are obese or have excess weight, uh, that extra extra weight in the tongue and in the tissues around the neck are gonna close to create obstructive sleep apnea. But also a lot of that has to do with uh, mouth posture as well. And if you do have proper mouth posture throughout your whole life, you're gonna be much less at risk for those things happening. Even if you have, for example, a bigger tongue, if you have proper jaw posture with your tongue resting at the roof of your mouth, um, your, your tongue's naturally not gonna fall back in the back of your neck there and create an obstruction. So there's stuff like that, um, oxygen deficiencies, and I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna add uh, athletic performance or reduced athletic performance there. The air is getting filtered better. You can take a larger volume of air. And then the last thing, which is the most important thing I would say was the facial development. So breathing out of your mouth keeps your mouth open. When your mouth is open, your tongue is down here at the bottom of your mouth and that over time pushes your jaw back and just creates a more of a, a longer, narrower face and less of a wide, stronger jaw, okay? That's basically part one. Now, when you have proper posture in your mouth, you have your tongue touching and almost sucking the roof of your mouth, uh, and then that tongue is actually widening your teeth as well. So you're gonna have a, a much wider uh, smile and much wider teeth. Now for me, when I was a kid, I actually really breathed out of my nose, no, my mouth a lot because I had se seasonal allergies and they would just get so bad um, that I honestly would almost have like allergies like year round. Like my seasonal allergies would be super bad from like April to like July. And then because I had such bad seasonal allergies, I would be so used to breathing out of my mouth that 
my sinus was always clogged up and I breathed out of my mouth a lot. And that over the years has actually contributed to a different facial development. Now I've been breathing out of my nose for about five years now and I think there has been a change. If you look at kind of my, my photos when I was younger, I think I did have a longer, narrower mouth, a little more recessed jawline. And also my teeth, if I smile, you see a lot of negative space there. And that's because my jaw, my teeth at, at the top, uh, top of my mouth, I'm getting really personal here, is actually quite narrow, okay? So my jaw isn't wide like that, and my teeth are quite narrow. And I'm not sure, but I think it does have to play a role with, I would say, by the ages of five to 12, I was probably exclusively mouth breathing. So those are some of the reasons why you're gonna wanna breathe out of your nose. Oh, the last thing we breathe out of your nose, you're gonna have a lot better uh, filterization of air, a lot better hum humidification of air. Uh, you're just gonna get better quality air if you're breathing it through your nose um, because your sinuses are actually quite big. Your sinuses go all over your face and head. I'll put a picture here. Uh, and so all that's filtering the air and um, making sure that it's moist for your lungs and making sure that it's clean. Whereas if you're breathing out of your mouth, it goes straight into your lungs. So it's just a more poor, poor quality of air, okay? Your nose, like the reason why we have a nose is to breathe. That's the only purpose of the nose. Well, I guess to smell as well, but we're not eating or talking anything out of the nose. It's our breathing tool and we should use it, okay? So how do we breathe out of our nose? Like that. But more importantly, how do we have correct jaw posture and make sure that we're breathing out of our nose more often. First of all, we, we gotta practice. Practice makes perfect. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. That's what they always say and it makes sense with your nose too or honestly, any body part. If you have a, your hand and you, I mean, there's actually yogis, like Indian yogis that do this, they'll put their hand up in the air and it'll be kind of like a thing for like sacrificial kind of like meditation type thing uh, and they, they'll lose their hand by keeping it in the air for so long, okay? It's kind of a graphic image. I, I don't know if I'll put the picture here. I'll put it here for like one second, okay? Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're not using any body part, you're gonna lose it. And it's the same thing with your nose. If you're not using your nose properly, uh, you're gonna lose it. Um, and you're gonna always feel like you're gonna have to breathe out of your mouth. So in the daytime, always try to drink water, remain as much moisture in your mouth as possible so you're nice and comfortable. And then try to close your mouth and try to breathe out of your nose, okay? You can also massage up here, around the forehead, down here as well. If you feel like it's uh, hard to breathe out of your nose, you might have to clear up your sinuses. So I always do that before bed. I always rub up here, rub down here to make sure I'm clearing out my sinuses so I can breathe out of my nose. And then the next thing is to have proper jaw and tongue posture. So you kinda wanna put your tongue at the roof of your, at your roof of your mouth and then suck in. And it kind of like locks your mouth in place and kind of creates a slight vacuum in your mouth as kind of a habit. And uh, the funny thing is kids are doing this now. It's called mewing, so look it up. Kids are doing it because they want to look like cool uh, superheroes um, and they're actually doing it. And it's kind of, I think it's apparently driving teachers nuts because kids won't answer questions in the school because they're, you know, obviously being a little obnoxious with the mewing thing. But uh, if your kid is mewing, or if your kid knows what mewing is, it's actually pretty good. They're actually just practicing proper jaw posture. So you can tell them to keep it up or you can act annoyed so they keep on doing it. So let's quickly touch on CPAP and then wrap this video up. So we sell, of course, nasal masks and full face masks. Nasal masks are gonna be a lot more comfortable because they're a lot more minimal. You know, it's just touching your nose here, right? It doesn't go all the way around the face. It's not hard and big like this big plastic, of course, when you're sleeping, your body needs to be in a position where breathing out of your nose and locking your mouth and mewing essentially is automatic. So if you are a mouth breather, try your best in the day to mew and breathe out of your nose. So in a few months time, your body's more used to it and you can switch over to a nasal mask, okay? Um, because people come into the office and they don't know which mask to get and they say, oh yeah, I breathe out of my mouth at night. I always wake up with dry mouth. And you know, we don't really have a choice. We have to give them a full face mask because that's what they need uh, to cure their sleep apnea. But what's really important is that they are trying their best to have proper breathing posture and switch eventually to a nasal mask because not only is it gonna be better for you and like all the benefits I talked about today, but it's also gonna be better with a CPAP mask because it's more minimal, less red marks, less leaking because there's a small surface area. Um, so as long as it seals in this small portion, you know, they're good to go, right? Versus this guy here, it could leak 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 anywhere, right? 
And so people with nasal masks and who are able to close their mouth when they're using CPAP and in general, definitely have a lot better CPAP experience, um, a lot less CPAP symptoms, aerophasia or dry mouth and stuff like that. And they're gonna have better therapy. Also, because their tongue is automatically outside of their mouth and not falling back as much, they can also sometimes decrease the amount of apneas they're having just by performing a better a mouth posture day to day and practicing nasal breathing, okay? To sum up, nasal breathing is better than mouth breathing. Mouth breathing has a whole list of side effects, including a poor jaw development. Um, that's gonna make sleep apnea worse, and it's also gonna make you have to use a full face mask. So I would recommend using a chin strap, keeping your mouth closed, using a nasal mask. Um, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable for you and a lot more healthy in the long run.